Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in this video I'm going to talk about some of the improvements to exporting in the latest version of Premiere. So those of you who've been using Premiere Pro CS6 know that when you go to File, Export, Media, it's a pretty manual process. You can make presets like some of the default ones that load, but the problem is every time you go to export, you have to kind of either have a preset that works or come in and start choosing the codec and the frame size and all these things manually. So let me show you how that would have worked. So let's say I want to export an Apple ProRes 422 sequence. I'd have to come in here to QuickTime, choose the codec as Apple ProRes 422, change the frame size because the frame size of my sequence isn't 72480 but for whatever reason Premiere has chosen this as the default that I want to start with. Now the reason for that was because it started from the preset I was on. So if I picked something like this HD 1080 2997 I would have a better starting point. So I'm going to do that. Change it from H.264 to Apple ProRes 422 and then I have 1920 by 1080 already in here, and then I can change to the frame rate of my sequence. You get the point. Basically, it's a very manual process. There was this sort of overall match sequence setting, and what that does is it basically takes your sequence settings, 1920, 1080, 23, 976, and that's all great. The problem is it'll use only your render codec, so you have to make sure that your render codec is exactly what you want to export to, otherwise you can't change it. So they've made some minor improvements, and let me show you what I mean by that. Now, unfortunately, in my scenario of exporting an Apple ProRes 422, the improvements really weren't that large. To really have a true match source, they've only implemented it across a couple codecs. So while this is a great improvement, I really wish that it was implemented across all codecs, especially things like Apple ProRes 422, Avid DNX HD, and things of that sort that are actual mastering codecs. So let me just show you what I mean. If I pick H.264, which is actually the MPEG-4 variety of H.264, you'll see I have this new setting called Match Source. So by default, it seems that everything is already checked. I'll just click Match Source. But the cool thing here is that I can check and uncheck specific parts of it. So let's say I do want to match my source, but instead of 1920 by 1080, I want to do a 1280 by 720. I can come in here and do that and then keep all of the other settings checked. So it's a really helpful way to be able to quickly adjust settings without having to have a million presets. So for instance, in the case of ProRes, I might have to have a 1920-1080 Apple ProRes at 29.97, 23.976, 25 for power. work. This is something that really helps that because you can have a preset saved where you just have everything checked, such as the frame rate, but you can specify something like the frame size, save this as a preset, and quickly recall it. So it gives you a lot more flexibility. I just hope that they apply it to more of the codecs. So if you want to see that, please send Adobe a feature request for more codec support here, preferably in things like Apple ProRes and Avid DNX HD and other mastering codecs. As of right now, I know they've implemented it across H.264 and also MPEG-2. I'm not sure how many other sources have that. These are the only two I know of right now. Again, please feature request this if this is something that interests you. And while this is a major step up in these two codecs, we need to see it in more codecs as well.